nearly ready to go, everything's faded, everything's ready. Let's get the hell out of here. Can you be careful, please? No guarantees on that one. Greenhorn skipper Bryce is embarking on his maiden voyage of the season. All right. Bye. Love you. Sure. You too. After buying a new lobster boat, the 25-year-old is cash-strapped. Can't afford to pay for a deckhand. They spent 150 grand on this boat, getting it ready and all that. And now all the market's crashed. A lot of the other boats and crews are waiting it out. They're able to. Um, financially, I can't. I've just got to get out there and, and try. Banks aren't going to wait for me. I don't like him going out on his own, but we don't really have much of a choice at the moment. When he goes out of reception, it's a bit of faith. one of the most dangerous jobs in the world, fishing. It's, you know, especially here in Tasmania. It's a risk Bryce is prepared to take, or his first season will be over before it even starts. we an absolute blood, sweat and tears just to get to where I am now, just to get this boat. And I really can't afford for it to fail, put everything into this. Um, everything's riding on, on this season. This time. Oh, have a good pot worth nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah! A lobster price meltdown hits hard. Come on, for sake. Lobster men right across the country made nothing so far. are struggling to stay afloat. It's just about getting some money in the bank for all of us. Battling to feed their families. I think we'll be pushing uphill to try and sell our 600 kilos off the wharf. Tough times calls for radical thinking. Come on! Come down! It's uh, quarter to 11. We haven't had a customer yet. Get it wrong, and it's game over. It's too early to give up yet. The Southern Ocean, Tasmania. In this trip, you just need to focus on making sure everything's working and just covering the bills for now and see what happens with the market. Greenhorn skipper Bryce is steaming towards Bruni Island on board his brand new lobster boat, the Anbri Dacra. The boat owes me a fair bit at the moment. I spent about 150,000 on it, and then I spent about 80 to 90,000 fixing a few things on it. Had to replace the keel, uh, the bow had to be reshaped, the electronics, new equipment, all came at a cost. Yeah, it'd be nice to get about 150 kilos of lobster. Uh, Anything under that probably won't be too happy, won't pay any bills, and then I'll focus on trying to sell them. To meet the repayments on his $150,000 boat loan. He's a nice uh, example of an East Coast prey. You know, all I can say is one day I might cash something like this. <laughs> Bryce is planning to follow in his father Kent's footsteps and sell direct to the public off the wharf. Just getting ready to shoot the gear now. Got nearly to the spot I wanted to shoot. The faster I get him in, the faster I get my dinner, then I'm happy. The rookie skipper has given himself four days to catch 150 kilos. When you're working by yourself, you've got to be extra vigilant of what's going on around you. Help you if something goes wrong. Makes it easy when you've got a deckhand, you know, that's Four eyes looking at the same thing, same area. Bryce's decision to work alone will keep his running costs down, but it's a dangerous move, especially for an inexperienced lobster man. All along the shoreline here, there's been a lot of landslides, so a lot of the big boulders come down the cliff faces, end up in the water. You've got to keep your eye on them, but they're also a good place to get crayfish. I like to know where all my pots go, so. I did forget to put a mark in. There we go. I'm happy now. Bryce needs to get all 47 pots set before nightfall. I'm trying to spread them out a bit, but there's just a, a few rocks that are quite nice and they've got a few nice edges on either side. So just trying to get a pot right next to them on either side is always good. You end up with a few more. Lobster, in case you miss them on one side, you can get them on the other. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of really nice double, triple-layered bottom here that can have a fair 
fair few lobsters on them. And working quick. Oh, he's throwing a pot over the board, overboard without a grapple. We're going to troll around until we pick that pot up. Failure to find his $300 pot will push him into the red. He's got the tight pot on, and the locking mechanism on the tipper didn't lock, so you end up with with a pot going for a swim with no rope attached. I hope there's something in it, Toves. This is yours. <laughs> 100 kilometres to the west. Nice. That's a size fish. I just caught it. Call it a jockey. Remember the old jockeys? Jockey fish. Skipper Squizzy is down $150,000 in lost revenue for the month. And with a wife and two kids to support, he needs to turn things around. A jockey's a lobster what rides the pot from the bottom all the way up. And they're only lucky if me or Tober catch it. So uh, hopefully uh, things go all well for us and uh, that jockey brings us luck. Squizzy and Deckhand Tabor are halfway through their five-day mercy dash to save themselves, trying to stem the financial impact of the lobster market crash. The market crashed. One day it's $90 a kilo. Next day it's nothing. Squizzy has remortgaged his house to free up cash to stop his business from going under. This is definitely the low point of uh, my fishing career, that's for sure. The crew has 48 hours to catch the rest of their 500 kilo trip target. Squizzy plans on selling it all direct to the public. A career first for the veteran skipper. So I've been thinking, what can we do to uh, help sell lobsters and crays to the public? And one of the ideas, maybe something like a van, you can put cooked lobsters in it. Have sandwiches, lobster sandwiches, rolls, half lobsters, chips and salad. Despite enormous financial pressure, Squizzy is trying to stay positive and think outside the box. We don't want to be stuck selling to the public off the wall because I, I think uh, a lot of boats are going to start doing it. in a lobster and we'll call it the lobster band. Yeah! What we want? Make some money out of that. Giant crab. Stick it in the tank and sell it. Tasmanian king crabs can weigh up to 15 kilos. This $500 bycatch will help boost Squizzy's wharf sales. I I was excited because something like that king crab looks pretty specky. So if you sell them to the public at the wharf, be able, the kids will be able to have a photo with it and uh, might be a bit of a draw card. Western Australia, 4,000 kilometres from Tasmania. And the Corrado is moored at its home port of Ledge Point. This is the short sides. The pots cost about $150 each to make. Half the expense of the Tasmanian beehive style pots. So they're a lot easier to work with, a lot easier to stack. You can stack them on your boat, you can stack them quite high. And I think ours probably weigh maybe a little bit more too, so sort of 60, 65 kilo, depending how much ballast you put in them. So they're a pretty hefty thing. Good for the boys' muscles. Skipper Jay and his nephews Matt and Robbie took a huge gamble to drop 90 lobster pots three days ago. Let's go fishing. But Chinese demand for live exports has dried up and the lobster industry is on its knees. A couple of months of no fishing is probably a couple of hundred grand's worth of lobster that we haven't caught yet. The lobster game is a no catch, no pay scenario. It's affecting everyone, you know, the whole industry up and down is, is um, in dire straits, I think. Jay's family business is $220,000 down in revenue for the season. Nah, um, still waiting. Yeah.
Maddie's $22,000 out of pocket and he's got a family. It's getting tight. Every penny will sort of help. So we can go fishing one day a week. It's better than no days a week at the moment. So until I reckon it's going to shut down even more. I'm going to run down the hardware. A $24,000 is riding on Jay's lobster buyer coming good on a promise to take a 500 kilo order. We're on day three now since we put them in. I was uh, hoping I might have heard something by now, but we haven't. I'm starting to get a bit worried. Hopefully this phone call comes pretty soon. They can't get crazy out of the country. Uh, there's no flight, so we've got no air space to put our lobsters on. We can't just supply lobsters to the processors because they've got nowhere to store them. And um, yeah, so we, they've just said, look guys, don't fish. We'll let you know when and uh, hang tight. Here we go. Big boss is on the phone, so hopefully uh, we might have some good news. Got any good news for us? Uh... See, you get a pot like that. Looks all right. Southwest Cape, Tasmania. Another good pot worth nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah! And the financial stress triggered by the lobster market crash is taking a toll on Skipper Squizzy. All I'm trying to do is, is make the uh, loss not as bad as what it could be. And just to sit here and think that you're getting pots with 10 instead of going, yeah, baby! It's just like... It really is. I uh, suppose one highlight out of this trip is that the commitment Tave has given me, you know, he's a bit of a hard nut, a bit arrogant sometimes, but I mean, a bloke to say he's going to come out and work for you for nothing, he's just the highest, isn't it? The highest, the highest. Despite being down $25,000 in wages for the month, the father of three has offered to sacrifice his entire paycheck for the trip. You know, if this thing goes on for, you know, another three, three to six months, How's he paying, how, how's he feeding his family? It's a fish, it's a big fish. It's about to be a dead fish. It's a stripy trumpet, arguably one of the better eaten fishes in the ocean. It's not a money fish, but that's dinner taken care of. Uh, you just fry him up in a bit of, a bit of flour in a pan. Stick him, on a, stick him on a plate with chips and salad. Couldn't ask for anything better. <laughs> Oh, what a catch! There you go, buddy. Thanks for all your hard work, mate. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, mate. The crew set out to catch 500 kilos for the trip. That was our last pot. We're heading home. We've caught more than what I set out to catch. Probably go close to 600 kilos. Now we've caught them. We just gotta find someone to buy them. If the demand's there and the price spikes, Squizzy will be able to sell his entire catch to his regular lobster buyer, Blakey. It'd be nice to uh, bring up Blakey tomorrow morning and uh, by some miracle he uh, offers us something like $60. That'd be good, but uh, I doubt it. So we'll get ready to sell them off the wharf. But selling 600 kilos off Margate Wharf comes with no guarantees, especially if there are other lobstermen selling at the same time. I've been stressed about catching them, now I'm getting stressed about selling them. But uh, we'll worry about that when we're going uh, up the Don Castro Channel towards home. <laughs> <laughs>